feels like a test that I fail so depressed when I can't seem to get out. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by y'all. By thirst, I'm inspired by worth. I desire your worst, so you can just hide while I work. I ain't tired, you first. I write a second, third verse about the lies you go disperse. You never did shit, I know it hurts. Something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by y'all. Hi this is Alex, welcome back to Auto World Channel, today we are talking about is the 2022 Mazda MX-30 good in snow, if you live in the Midwest, one thing you can count on each year is snow, Wisconsinites are used to having snow on the roads for over half the year, while this may be the case, it is still important to have a vehicle that can handle the snow, the 2022 Mazda MX-30 has many features that make it compatible with driving on snow and ice covered roadways. This blog is going to go over those features and tell you where you can get your own 2022 Mazda MX-30 in the southeastern Wisconsin area. The first place you should look when debating if a vehicle can handle the snow is the mechanical features. There are 7 trim levels for the 2022 Mazda MX-30. Each of these trims comes available in iActive Ord, registered sign, with off-road traction assist. The Ord option allows drivers to utilize all four tires when driving in unfavorable road conditions. The off-road traction assist can help with freeing tires that are stuck. This goes beyond snow to include mud and sand. When evaluating the exterior of the 2022 Mazda MX-30 it is clear the vehicle is ready for a variety of conditions. This crossover SUV was designed with 16-inch aluminum allow wheels in the base trim. Other trims offer 18-inch aluminum allow wheels. The tires are all season tires, so they are prepared to handle the winter months. There is also an 8-inch ground clearance, which can help when snow begins to get deep. The 2022 Mazda MX-30 has better odds of getting through deep snow with these features working together. The saying goes, better late than never, right? Well, I feel like that's kind of been Mazda's go-to motto for quite some time now. In the end. It's been forgivable because while the product features or changes may have been slightly later to the game than most, the implementation was so well done that we all forgot the delay. Well, Mazda has finally released a fully electric vehicle in their lineup, the MX-30 GT, and they are the last manufacturer in Canada, luxury offshoots aside, to do so. So, you'd think, after all this time and upon seeing what's on the market currently, that their first product to the plate would be nothing short of top level in every way. We wish we could say it is, but there are definitely some foibles and kinks to work out before it can be considered a viable player in the electric vehicle landscape in Canada. It's always better to start with the positives, so let's do that. If there's one thing Mazda continues to do well, it's design great looking vehicles. The Mazda MX-30 GT is stunning to look at from all angles. It features the manufacturer's recognizable Kodo design from nose to tail. We adore the angular shelf life headlights and taillights, and even realize that they serve a practical purpose in the winter, ensuring snow dust gather in front of the lights so they are never block. They act like their own little awning, which is pretty neat. Other cool features on the MX-30 are the suicide doors to access the back seat. Unlike the Mini Cooper Club Man from years ago that only had one suicide door on the passenger side, the Mazda features on both sides, 
I love it because it look pretty cool sitting there open. However, it can be cumbersome in a crowded parking lot, since you do have to open the front doors slightly wider in order to get to the back seat door handle and open it properly to get in. Inside, it's really nice to see normal Mazda aesthetics and features. Oftentimes, getting into a fully electric vehicle can feel like stepping into a spaceship and the learning curve can feel quite steep. Such is not the case with the MX-30 which is very similar to the Volkswagen E-Golf. The only really difference I found in the MX-30 are the fully digital touchscreen HVAC settings, and those are easy to use, and offer both touchscreen and clickable button options for adjustments. Thanks Mazda. Another great thing about the MX-30 is the way it drives. I've yet to get into a Mazda product I didn't enjoy piloting, and I am happy to say that the MX-30 did not disappoint. Steering is connected, and throttle response is great. Of course, the electric motor that has zero delay in power buildup helps, but it's clear Mazda engineers were careful to ensure the experience in the MX-30 would be on par with that in a Mazda CX-30 or even CX-5. We really wish there was an old version of the MX-30, but at the moment both the GS and GT only offer front-wheel drive. This isn't terrible, but it really does make a difference in the winter. Having instant electric power means getting used to wheel spin and understanding that there is quite a bit of oomph up front at all times. Again, not terrible, but spreading out that power to all four wheels would make the MX-30 that much more practical. There's just one more major thing that Mazda has to work on now. Range. Yup, it's been ages since I felt any sort of range anxiety in an electric vehicle. But boy did I ever feel it in the MX-30. I was actually happy to have a backup vehicle for the week for my longer trips, which weren't even that long, round trip total of about 140km. The most I was able to squeak out of the MX-30 on a full charge was 170km, and those kilometers dwindled quickly. Even with heavy Regan mode activated while driving, I just couldn't recoup the mileage and it seemed to drain oh so quickly, faster than most. And while I was driving the vehicle in colder conditions, I was careful to keep my heating at a minimum, and understood my lack of ability to precondition hurt the millage as well. However, it was still rather shocking, as an urban only vehicle that travels 20 kilometers or less at a time and can be plugged into a level 2 or more charger each time, this vehicle makes sense, or as a secondary for weekend errands close to home, but as an everyday vehicle, it's a hard sell, and the odd thing is, Driving the Mini SE was not at all stressful and it has essentially the same range as the Mazda. However, the Ray Gen was much stronger and we were able to ensure we gained millage while driving instead of simply having to rely on a plug when we were stopped. That was the most concerning element behind the wheel of the MX-30, which is disappointing. There was so much potential in this little crossover-esque from Mazda, and it's somehow fallen flat when we really wished it hadn't. The only hope is that they work quickly to catch up to the likes of the Ford mach -E and upcoming Volkswagen ID.4 in terms of range and capability or else they are going to relegate it to the realms of the EV and, unfortunately, Leaf. Time to pick up the pace Mazda you've got some serious catching up to do. Thank for watching.